So hi guys, um, thanks for coming on my podcast. Um, it's nice to have you here. I mean, the platform was created to, to speak to founders like yourself and talk about the solutions you're creating in the tech space. So would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, Ricardo. Uh, great to be on. Uh, it's uh, My name is Shane O'Donnell. I'm the CEO of Lanu, um, and I'm an R2BI town planner. Um, nice. Lorcan. Hi, Ricardo. Uh, Lorcan is my name. My background is in TV, film, more media stuff, but uh, I joined Lanu uh, about three years ago, and I'm the VP now. We're focusing on business development, financial, financials, team building, and uh, trying to learn a little bit about HR. Nice. So um, when did uh, Lanu start? Uh, it started at the end of uh, 2018. Um, it was, it came from a, a conversation uh, between myself and the CTO, Luke, who's a mathematician. And uh, it was, I'd been working on, I'd been a town planner uh, in local authorities for in about seven years. And I kind of saw the problem, which was it's very hard to get a very uh, simple answer out of uh, a very simple question, uh, which is, what can I do to my house? And I was on the other side of that fence, I guess. People were coming to me asking, can I do this? Can I do that? And giving complicated answers. So I was thinking there must be a simpler way of, of doing this. There must be a simpler way of communicating what's possible to people. Mm-hmm. And a conversation with Luke, uh, who's a mathematician, was like, OK, can we build an algorithm to do this, to calculate every possible planning possibility for your house, whether that's permitted development, full planning, or on their prior notification, which is a former permitted development. And to be honest, when, when, when the project started, I, I don't think um, I knew much about uh, algorithms. I, I kind of had a little bit of background in maths, like from school, and I did logic at college. But, um, but yeah, it was a bit of a crash course in writing pseudocode and building a system and, uh, and that's where kind of Lanu began. It began with that conversation. It began with a lot of Skype calls to uh, to kind of initially build a tech from line one. Yeah. And then as it evolved, it evolved kind of into a business. It was a project originally then into a business. And then Lorcan and Ron got involved. Uh, I think Lorcan was the one who was saying to us, okay, this is great tech you guys are building, but you need to, you need to go talk to people <laughs> and maybe, mm-hmm. um, you know, build a business out of it. I think we, we, we had that in mind, but we, we didn't know where to start with that. And, and we were just focused on solving the problem initially. Okay. So in terms of um, when you had the idea and kind of put the, the guys together to, to, to pull it off, what made you think that there's a need for it? Um, well, it just couldn't be any worse than what it is in the sense that you, you go at the moment, if you want to figure out what your options are, Mm-hmm. Uh, for your house, um, then you need to, well, you can go into a council office and, and frankly, um, they don't have much resources to help you because I was that person on the desk. You usually, if people don't have drawings, you usually send them away, get me some drawings. So then they go get the drawings through the architect. But the architect isn't actually the one who spends the time deciding what's possible. They're they're the ones who to kind of, I suppose, take your dreams and make them a reality. Yeah. And then there becomes a lot of back and forth between the architect and the planner. And it could be months into the process before anybody has told you this is what you can do and this is what you can't do. Mm-hmm. And and I think that's uh, so like there must be a better way. Like the technology has evolved very rapidly. But like when we started, I think we were just trying to calculate what's the max possible of a house. And then we realized that through our system that we we created all the different options. You know, that was the way we were calculating the maximum. We thought this mm-hmm. was interesting. And then Luke kept kind of evolving the system where we, we could create 3D models of the different options. Yeah, And then we realized, that. yeah, we realized, bang, that's it. Well, people can visually see their options. Um, that's um, that's key. And, and in planning, what you approve is actually the plans, not the scheme. So it's a weird kind of metaphysical thing, but you approve the representation of what you propose to do. Okay. So, so I, I think that's a strong point and, and that kind of evolved uh, naturally, which was the more we could make the 3D models better, and we've even experimented with AR, the more people can understand their options, you know? Yeah, I had a look at um, the demo you've got on the website, and my background's um, in property management. I did a bit of deal sourcing and stuff. And sometimes when you're looking at investments, the first thing on your mind is, how can I maximize this investment? And what I usually have to do is go on Google Maps and have a look at all the neighbors, see what the neighbors are doing and stuff like that. 
but I suppose what you've what you've created is something where I can literally put the postcode in, put the address in, and it will just um, churn out the extension, the the loft conversion, whichever it needs um, that will maximize the actual value of it. And I saw that as well. You can it actually gives you the values in terms of estimated developments as well as um, the potential value of the property after. How yeah, did you well, put all that into we, it? We, we give the costings because the costings is based on floor space um, and we give a mm -hmm. estimated hope value. Uh, it's something we're looking to kind of improve though because uh, the costings is, is can be quite accurate based on postcode. The the value is, um, I think value, house values is a bit more of an, an irrational science than I think a lot of people kind of think that there's a lot of AI out there trying to kind of create, you know, uh, I know Zoopla have in right move, this is your house value and whatever. Yeah. But there's yeah. a lot of variables that go into it. Um, so I think long term, if you want to really get an accurate uh, view of kind of the, the value I think you would need to map kind of an entire kind of area or city and then see the, what, when houses become value, I think for their potential is when other houses in the area don't have that potential. So um, like we give a, a basic kind of hope value calculation, but like our plans in the future is to really refine that and make it more and more accurate wow. because I think it's a variable that hasn't really been measured properly, which is what's the, what's the, what's the development potential of a house as such. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Like, in terms of in terms of building your well, Lanu, um, what was the the limitations that you found coming from your background in in, in planning um, to go straight into developing essentially a, a a platform that uses augmented reality and complex algorithms? Like, how did you transition uh, into that? um I, I think personally it was it was difficult because i was seven years a, a planner uh, in local authority so i was maybe a little bit institutionalized <laughs> at that point <laughs> and um it's such a different mindset uh, in a little way it's like as a, as a local authority town planner you're you're very uh, risk adverse and you don't take chances and to be honest i, I had had got nowhere in in within councils trying to advocate change and uh, as in more progressive approaches because to be honest, there's such financial pressures in councils mm -hmm. that uh, it's very much kind of keep it simple and just get through the day. And I think that's not there's not that there's not good people there. It's just as I say, you can create a culture where you know it's not innovative. And then you go from that to a startup where you really have to to push the boundaries, I guess. Um, yeah. And uh, and you also get into management issues where you have similarly with a council, you have no resources, but it's more that. I think you realize you have to be the innovator. You have to be the one um, mm -hmm. who's kind of coming up with the solutions. So it's quite a uh, it was quite a transition from a, from that culture to, to, to kind of a startup culture. But um, but I think that was the main challenge for me as a, as a team. I think um, I think we've we've always from the very beginning had a good team. And like a, a fact I suppose is that myself, Lorcan, Ron, and Luke all went to school together in Ireland. So nice. Okay. Um, and after school, we all went and kind of did different things with our lives. And, and I realized the strength of our team is we all kind of have different professional backgrounds. And and that's how we deal with, I think, difficult challenges. Like, and there's a lot of challenges, say, in Techstars. Uh, and that's that's why Techstars is so good is because they, they put a lot of challenges in front of you. But I think it's the mm -hmm. diversity of the team that that enables us to problem solve and such. You know? That's good. Yeah, just, just to add to that, Shane, um, I think another big challenge we had probably still do is communicating the, the problem to people who, who don't understand this so you know it's easy to explain to you ricardo as you said you, you worked in in around the property games so you're, you you know the problems are obvious and the, the solutions needed are, are difficult to implement but probably obvious but mm -hmm. a lot of people i think we just assumed a lot of people would have gotten the idea easier than it has been you know they're like, yeah. oh yeah, property. I'll just look at what the neighbors do. Yeah, it's no big deal. And we're like, no, no, it's it's a lot more complicated. Now it doesn't need to be, but but it is unfortunately. So so who are your your, your customer base? Who's it targeted um, towards? Well, currently, uh, our current business is 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 with more um, people involved in property who are looking at the long term potential, whether they be kind of developers or would they be solicitors or whether they be kind of uh, mortgage providers so that's our initial mm -hmm. customers people who are looking at the long-term kind of asset value oh, okay. because i think that's 
Uh, but at the same time, we have on our website, we we kind of have a, a BTC offering where you can go to the website, put in the address, and mm -hmm. we'll tell you the PD analysis. Uh, that's still in beta version. Like I, I think that's 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 a good point that, that Lorcan brings up is that um, I think we're doing something quite new and and you kind of have to do as much education as, as you do selling. So like I, I think traditionally people wouldn't approach it like 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 they can see all their options for a house because that service hasn't existed before so so you have yeah. this problem where before chicken before the egg but i think long term our solution there and what we've been working on behind the scenes is is to create a the way i put it is to create a browser for the results so we have the results these are your options but we mm -hmm. need to create something a bit more interactive where where people can kind of you know play around with their options and see their options and then our codification of planning comes into its own where, okay, you've looked at the options for your house. These are the options that are allowed. And uh, so I think the B2C offering needs to, to evolve a bit, but still still a very useful information for about uh, 120 quid is what your PD options yeah, are, because yeah. as I say, you can bounce around a lot and not get that information, you know? Yeah, no, who definitely. our clients are what was probably a, a bigger challenge than we assumed. Like some of our assumptions, I think, sorry to, to uh, to dump on estate agents, right? Everyone else does. So, you know, our assumption was we tell an estate agent, we can analyze a house for you. And, you know, you know what this information can sell it for a higher price. We thought this is a simple assumption. All estate mm -hmm. agents would want this. What we soon learned was a lot of estate agents don't really want the truth of a house because sometimes the truth is there is no extension possibilities. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Our, our interest from estate agents has has been um, minimal to say the least, or or conflicted. But before we started, we were like, well, obviously they're going to want this. You know, why wouldn't they want this? But in reality, we found mm -hmm. people actually working in the probate sector and other sectors where they actually have a little bit more time to consider the house. So you know, the oh, probate okay, example yeah. is good because you know they take on a, a house or an assets and they say right now what are we going to do with it let's get the maximum value but yeah, obviously yeah. estate agents are just about churn churn yeah you probably know better than anyone ricardo yeah yeah no that makes a lot of sense it makes... i'm gonna jump around a bit because I, I found it was interesting that um you said that all well the team all your team members you all went to school together and you all went off and did different careers and then now you're all together back on this project um what was it like kind of convincing all your, your your school friends to come on this journey with you and to 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 build out this business as opposed to what they've already been doing. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I was convincing. I, I don't know what I I was tricked. I was tricked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's at this stage it's, it's not just so I just point out that we, we did uh, bring in uh, Marco as a mathematician and Andrew as well who uh as well as a, as, a, as a kind of trainee. So we've expanded beyond that initial group. Um, but yeah, initially, I, I think it was a bit of a carefree attitude of, well, actually, why not? Let's do it. I swear, well, mm -hmm. initially with me and Luke, it was just, Luke was coming out of academia and he was kind of like, he was fed up with that. And he said, okay, well, let's do something practical. Uh, uh, Lorcan was uh, was kind of just like, look, you, you lads got something good here. You gotta, you gotta talk to people. So he's pushing and, so, and Ron, Ron's kind of initial came in was that, um, you know, I, I think he had from a graphic design point of view, and he's actually working in land searches in a similar area, but he wasn't doing much okay. graphic design. And uh, so it was an opportunity for people, I suppose, to display their skills. It was an opportunity for Luke to work on something in the real world using his math skills, me to mm -hmm. to use my planning knowledge, I guess, to, to do something useful with it, and, and Ron to design bit, and Lorcan to kind of, I suppose, not to put words in the best, expand on, he had been involved in some startups before to kind of expand on that, on that, on that space as much. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely, um, it's got loads of benefits. And then, yeah, sometimes it is like, you, we might have great, like not crazy, but yeah, kind of uh, manic big discussions that you would no way speak to um, <laughs> a regular employee with under modern, um, you know, yeah. HR levels because we're just like, ah, that took that time 20 years. Like, you're so much backstory. But yeah, also, yeah. then it's great because we can just be like, nah. And then, like, we can just drop things, nothing festers, and yeah. just say it all out. And, and then it moves on, which is, yeah, no, I think overall it's been great. But for me, I kind of gradually just, got sucked in i was like oh you should talk lots of friends work in tech and stuff so mm -hmm. i was like you should talk to my friend paddy he, he's he works he's worked with loads of different startups and you know and chain talk to him and then uh another 
guy, Brendan. Big shout out to Brendan, who runs an accelerator in Madrid. I was like, oh, I've got to talk to Brendan as well. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of done this several oh, okay. times. And then suddenly I was like, well, I could actually help here a bit. And then, you know, kind of just went like that. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. So, like, you, you, you touched on, like, the, the accelerators that you, you, you guys are on as well. Um, and I've been told you, you, you're on, you've been on three. Um, like, how have you found them helpful? Uh, they've all been quite different, I think. Um, well, two were kind of I suppose, uh, more full on. And then the London Partners, I, I think, was, was good to meet people. And I think it suffered due to the pandemic because I think the purpose of that is to kind of engage with people in your locality. <laughs> and and yeah. we really obviously couldn't do that in the current uh, climate. Uh, the first one we did the space, IoT Space Tech, and yeah, Brendan, um, uh, we, we talked to Brendan and he said, oh, you, you should do this. Except we applied for it because we use satellite imagery. And it was a kind of space tech. So we said, great. And yeah, that was a great experience because I know that we hadn't done at that point, hadn't done anything like that. Um, and, and engage with other companies, see similar challenges. Like you do go over the same thing in, uh, in accelerators, I suppose, about business plan and scaling. But to be honest, if you've never done it before, you probably need to go through it three times before you, you start talking. Really? <laughs> like, you know, um, <laughs> in the sense of, you know, what, what it means. But at the same look accelerators are great we went on to Techstars there like in september and that was very intense and very good and, and i think we've always been felt a little bit of like outliers in some of these programs though like a uh, prop tech kind of outliers in the sense yeah that in, in, in 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 um tech stars is very much a lot of app development and uh, mm -hmm. we 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 flirted with an app and such but we're we're kind of more i don't know more prop tech deep tech at times um but it's great to be surrounded by the other companies i think that's the main benefit and you, you kind of get you get you kind of you see some of their uh, good judgments and some of their mistakes and you you kind of you, you kind of can place yourself and say what kind of company are you and i think okay, that's kind yeah. of important you know when you go and you go look for investment is to yeah it's to realize what you're about and what you're trying to do and and maybe you're not trying to do what other companies are so yeah. it's good that you could constantly be looking at other companies and going well like is that what we're going to try to do so for example i don't think we're obsessed with um I think we want to grow kind of gradually in a sense this is not the approach you should go in with vcs with um but you should you know we we kind of have many different avenues to go down and we're kind of like okay we need to get a foothold in this area a foothold in that area and then develop long term so we're not we're not that we're not looking for that hockey stick and i think it took us a while yeah. to realize that's just not us like you know and as shane says uh ricardo it's hard to you're trying to be honest, right? You're trying to be true to yourself. You're trying to be as ambitious as possible. But as Shane says, it, it's not like our app can suddenly be downloaded a million times tomorrow, right? There's yeah, only a certain yeah. amount of homeowners in the UK. There's only a certain amount of people, you know, even if we hit 20% of them, you know, you're, you're never going to become a, you know, a, a viral sensation or whatever. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, we're going to blow up. But on the other side of that, it's a very real industry you're in, you know, the London mm -hmm. property market. Like, come on, this is this is a world renowned industry where yeah, you know, yeah. the world comes to bank their deeds, mm -hmm. ill gotten or not, you know, they come <laughs> buy property in London. So yeah, let's be realistic here. There's a lot of money, you know, in, in this game. So we always felt like well, we're, we're close to this money. Shane has a very tangible skill. Luke has made this really good software. So like, come on, there has to be something here. All the while being told by kind of some people on the these accelerators, well, you know, your predictive uh, core engagement uh, multiplier da, 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 isn't up there. And we're like, yeah, but we're working in property and we think there's money here. You know, yeah, there's real yeah, money yeah. nearby. Maybe not a billion users, but, you know. But they say that the, the, the model changes depending on your, invest, your investors. So if you've got VC funds and you kind of have to be more geared towards um, exponential growth, I yeah. suppose, for building users. And it's not so much um, profitability, but it's about revenues and, and yeah, user engagement, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so, so in terms of like um, sourcing the, the finance that you've got now, how have you able to get over that hurdle of being able to get funding as well as um, take your own approach in terms of growth? Um, I, I think you have to get to the point, I think with any startup, I think you have to get to the point where you're willing to go it alone. Now, mm -hmm. as in you're like, like say, okay, I forget all the investors and we're just going to go to that. You have to get somewhere along the line. You have to get to that point 
And then, funny enough, once you get to that point, that's when investment comes, where people go, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll invest. In <laughs> it's like you have to show that level of kind of like stubbornness and perseverance. Um, but it's stressful and it's very kind of uh, very stressful because you're like, you can kind of run low. But now I think we have a few uh, like we're, our investment wise things. Things have been going pretty well over the last few months and uh, continue nice. to kind of in, have discussions. So I, I think we're getting to the point of sustainability. But I think you have to. Yeah, you have to go through the middle a little bit, and um, and it's and it's, yeah, stuff like the, the approach I, I think is is realizing as I gone back to that point about what you, you, you can go into those meetings and you can you can you can pretend you're you're going to do this kind of ten exponential growth and so on, but I think I realized as a CEO that that wasn't me kind of early. I'm not. I can sell something that I believe in, and I can sell something tangible. I'm I'm just mm-hmm. not the kind of person who can go in there and completely completely make it up you know it's just not me yeah, and yeah. that's fine and you just have to find investors that respect that and i think the investors we have do respect the kind of honesty and the kind of the, the attempted authenticity because i think a really important point of elanu is we're trying to solve a problem we're problem solving we're trying to solve a big problem in the property sector and uh, that's that's really hard and then the other thing is it doesn't necessarily fit with what investors want to see so they want to see that growth and Mm -hmm. i sometimes think if you create an app that that does kind of like a a gimmick kind of feature and then you can multiply it by ten thousand, that's or a hundred thousand or a million then that's it but is that solving a real world problem yeah yeah like you know we're, we're like 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 planning is like it doesn't sound important but the amount of resources that go into planning departments for mm-hmm. uh, simple householders that detract from things like uh, affordable housing or wider planning considerations, affordability in general is a massive issue is uh, that everybody living in London or Dublin or can find. So, so, so I think on the periphery or at the core, sometimes I think we can make a difference by making huge efficiencies within the, 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 the main process of, of how development happens, which is planning. And um, and that's a, that's a big problem with loads of entrenched kind of stakeholders. So maybe <laughs> maybe it isn't the best bet if you want the quick book. But if you're looking to invest in a company trying to solve a big problem with maybe big rewards at the end of it, if you achieve that, then mm-hmm. I suppose that's that's our identity, you know. So, so did you go down the uh, angel investor route, or was it like a, a VC route? Yeah, we have a mixture. We have, we have uh, angel investors on board, and and we have uh, we have a VC um, that we're like pretty much on board, and and um, so so we've done a combination, and I think we always pursue that. I think at the early stages, you 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 have to gonna, I think starting with angels is not a bad place because it's it's yeah. easier to, especially if you if you don't have much numbers or tangible uh, revenue, it's 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 better to explain a vision to a kind of. To an, to an angel investor because I realized with the VCs that you could be in a meeting with a, a VC associate and you could explain it like the most wonderful vision about how you're going to change the universe or whatever but I know that they then have to go back in talk to talk to other people in a room yeah and they're going to be asked where are the numbers so it's it's a lot more at a certain level of development when you do have the numbers they can make that case but unless you give them the ammunition which is a spreadsheet with nice looking numbers <laughs> They're not going to get that investment signed off, and that's yeah, that's fair enough. Like that's the way it works, you know. So and just on on that, our our key investor actually is still um, TechStars, Ricardo. So even okay. even after our angel rounds and even after our VC comes on now, which we hope to announce in the next few days without uh, right. cursing it. Yeah, I mean TechStars will still be the the biggest player on our cap table, and, and we're very happy with that. Um, the MD in London is another Irishman, so it's sort of, sort of a bit of an Irish Matthew going on there. Is uh, Amy <laughs> Gary, and yeah, I mean, it was, you know, the, the accelerator was fantastic, but it's kind of the ongoing support and guidance there. Like we, yeah. aiming at the end of the phone to go, we've just been asked this very, you know, technical question. We really don't know the answer at all here. We don't want to seem foolish. And, you know, Amy will help us out of a hole anytime. That's really good. That's yeah. really good. Okay, so if you had um a piece of advice for i know you guys have been running for a few years but if you had a piece of advice for someone like myself who's just starting out um still in pre-seed stage or actually still in still developing the products actually like what would be the best piece of advice um well i i I think it would be to pick (laughs) to yeah to pick a substantial problem like um because Mm -hmm. 
like there's going to be a lot of sacrifices a lot of um a lot of pressure a lot of anxiety and all the rest but if, if you're not if you're not actually solving something that's actually interesting or solving something that makes a difference then you're kind of always trading when you're doing a startup you're going well i can go off and get a, a job and it's worth this amount and but you mm -hmm. kind of go why do i do a startup because it's, it's more interesting it's more engaging so i think people say passionate about the idea but I think it's more it has to be an interesting idea you can get passionate about an interesting idea you just heard as long as you care about it and you go like you want to see it through because it is it sounds corny but it is the idea that gets you through like it's i don't think we could at this stage walk away easily from landed because i say luke just seems to every couple their cto every couple of weeks goes oh i found this and i've done this and we we're like wow that's brilliant or it could be the mm -hmm. ar or it could be 3d models are improved with now automated bricks and you're just going to get lost in the idea. So you want something like yeah. that. You want something you can st 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 uh, sink your teeth into, I think, you know. Yeah, okay. the one piece of advice I'd, <laughs> I'd have, Ricardo, is get your dancing shoes on, man. Be ready to pivot. You're ready to turn <laughs> because uh, I didn't, we didn't quite answer it earlier, but you were asking about uh, customers and, you know, product market fit and all that. And, and really, yeah, we assumed it would be estate agents. It hasn't that has worked out. But we're very happy working with our, our current clients and, and um, you know in the housing association world and, and and kind of that you know that supported housing sector is where we're going but yeah shane says you know we we've put the product out there b2c nearly as a as a trial you know the product is is probably still in beta but it, it works and we're happy with it but yeah you know we're still not sure would it be b2c long term maybe it will be in america you know maybe if yeah. certain things change here or that but you know be prepared to to change your your customer focus and pivot your product over and over and over again. Perfect. And that's that's really good advice. That is really good advice. Um, but thank you for today. Um, we'll definitely keep in touch. I'd like to get you guys back on um, further down the line, see the new advancements that you guys are up to and how the team's building and those things. Um, but yeah, uh, if there's anything else you want to add to... Uh, no no it's, I, just, it's it's been a pleasure to have the chat and um and yeah and uh, happy yeah happy to stay in touch and uh yeah it's great we we um you know it's great just i think it's the best way of kind of discussing a startup as, as a conversation uh of course. because uh you kind of you you actually go in that's the other thing you could prepare you got to prepare to go in and pitch and pitch and pitch and uh i gotta say i you get good at it but i i kind of it's not something i much more enjoy this kind of conversation so happy to be back on again sure thanks you. thank you um and yeah good luck for the new vc as well um are you guys looking for for other investors to get involved uh strategic ones maybe yeah like as okay. you probably encountered lots of guys with a little bit of interest in property and tech so some of our angels you know to really tick both those boxes you know they probably own a yeah. few properties they've invested in several companies so yeah, yeah i mean we're always on the lookout for for guys who could you know not just invest but kind of give us their strategic input you know perfect well hopefully someone might come through <laughs> from this <laughs> um but um yeah well th thanks for today and uh Perfect, Ricardo. keep in touch yeah definitely take care thanks Good buddy enough. thank you thanks.